Snortius returned to the shining city of Snortantinople. Despite losses, the mutant snot boss was once again victorious. But as he entered the walls of Snortantinople, he saw two figures standing before him, nearly the same size and stature as himself. Gretchen. The new crop was starting to pop up. Snortius looked down at Tree Climber and Snotbow, his two capable snots that proved their value again and again, and probably saved his life when they were fighting the big lizard thing. What was he to do? Would these two trusted lieutenants fall under the rule of the rising grots? If Snotbow and Tree Climber fought and killed these two, they might mutate the same way he did, and also become grotlings, or maybe snotchins. Ew, no, 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 not snotchins, grotlings. Grotlings was much better. Regardless, was he willing to risk their lives in the arena? Snotius moved towards the two fresh Gretchen, who still had some dirt behind their ears from the climb out of their cocoon. One Gretchen wore a goofy grin on his face and smelled like he'd been rolling in the squig dung. The other seemed to have a bit more cunning in his eyes, and he had a larger, almost swollen head. So, here's the new Gretchen. Snotius brought himself to his full height. The two grots seemed to be sizing him up as well. But it was indisputable. Snortius was definitely bigger. The snot boss sniffed the air and made a face. I'ma call you stinky. He looked at the other Gretchen with the overly large head. I'ma call you the brain. Stinky and the brain. How? I always wanted to be called Stinky ever since that time long ago when the boss called me it right now. Stinky, you never cease to disappoint me. Snotius rubbed his chin and decided what he would do with these two. Well, Snotbow and Tree Climber could use some more fighting to bigger them up, and the Grots were still plenty useful. They were dead cunning. More dead cunning than snots, anyway. He decided to put them to work. All right, Stinky. You take care of the squig farms. I want more attack squigs. More squig hounds. Oh, and maybe we get us a climbing squig for tree climber here. You got it, boss. Brain, I want you to work with Pegleg. He's me best building snot. And he can tell you the building stuff that needs doing to bring more greatness to Snot Tantanople. I understand. Come, Stinky. It's time to get to work. Stinky and the brain nodded and set about their tasks. Now, to get Tree Climber and Snotbow even bigger, they needed something to fight. Ooh, yes, that pretty thing that ran really fast. The one with horns and hooves that he saw the one night when the sky cracked with light and water poured from the clouds in buckets. The appearance of the elegant creature stuck in Snortius's mind. He wanted to catch it and kill it. The horns alone would make for some fine pokey bits. So, Snortius began gathering resources for his expedition. The lizard he slew would need to be butchered, and the skin put to better use. A new skull to go on his head, and scales to be draped over the bone armor he already carried. Snotius would also need a fresh, sharp bit for his pokey stick, as the scaly thing broke off the end of his last one. Snotius also needed some more snots if he was going to take down something as big and dangerous as this horned thing creature with the long legs. The creature was about as tall as the big lizard was long. 
it was potentially big, fast, odd, and quite dangerous. Snottius decided he needed to handpick the finest snotlings in Snottantinople to join him on this expedition. Expend a snot. Fodderus. Red Shirt 2. Punch and Bag. And Steve. Naturally, Tree Climber and Snotbow would come along too, as well as the Squigs, Pog Chomp, and Squigarlicus. As preparations were being made for the expedition to kill the weird thing, Snotius happened to pass by the fungus patch. His nose caught a whiff of something. It was one of the no-eat mushrooms. Snotius instinctively knew, from the time he was a very small snot, not to eat the no-eat mushrooms. The smell told him that eating it was bad. But what if the no-eat mushroom was bad for someone else? Someone who was very tall, perhaps. Someone that walked on four-hooved legs with really big horns on their head. Snortius carefully grabbed a few of the no-eat mushrooms and crushed them against the big pokey stick. So, when he stabbed the long horn, he would crump it extra hard. Before too long, the team was assembled and armed. Snortius carried his long pokey stick with a fresh sharp stone head, his lizard armor shining in the sun and the skull of the creature sitting neatly atop his own noggin. The new snots were armed with bug mandible long choppers that most of them sort of knew how to use. Well, no time to learn like the present. And so, the expedition set off for adventure. Snortius led the way. At first, the going was slow. The hoof prints that were left in the mud earlier were gone, and enough time had passed that Squigarlicus could not pick up the scent. Snortius had to use his cunning and luck to guess where the thing might be hiding he decided to go deeper into the forest. Slowly the trees began to grow larger, the canopy thicker, and the forest floor became darker and darker. Try as they might, neither Snotbow nor Squigarlicus could find a trail. Snotius was getting ready to give up and head back to Snotantinople before the sun set. But then... Squigarlicus began grunting excitedly and pulling hard on his leash. I think he found something, boys. The squighound began snuffling and grunting as he led the group along the scent trail. However, Squigarlicus suddenly found himself looping back on the trail, going this way and that and looking confused. Boys, I think the hoof get did a lot of running round here. The path goes all over the place. Tree climber, climb up high and see if you can see it anywheres. Right, boss. The nimble snot scrambled up the nearest tree. These trees were thick and quite difficult to climb, but tree climber's grabby fingers reached into the subtle cracks in the bark and quickly scrambled up. He took a look and scanned the area. After a moment... He climbed back down, putting a finger to his lips. I see that. It's over there drinking some water all peaceful like. Right. Now, it's too fast to just run after it. We need a plan. Snotty has stuck a finger up his nose to help him think. The new snots followed the example of their boss. Oh God, said. Snot bowing eye. We'll sneak round it. You lot go hide behind that tree over there. Once we get behind it, we spook it and chase it towards you. Then you lot jump out and chop and poke it to death. We'll keep it from turning and running away. Snortius's plan received nods and quiet whispers of approval and understanding before Tree Climber, the Squigs and the Snots took their positions. Snortius and Snotbow began making their way 
towards the target. As they approached, Snortius accidentally stepped on a dry twig that was covered by some leaves. As soon as the crack broke the silence, the horned creature raised its head, and its ears darted this way and that, trying to locate the source of the sound. Snortius froze in place, not even daring to breathe. Snortbow gestured for the boss to stay as still as he could as he reached into a pouch he was carrying, and pulled out some purple stuff, and began smearing it all over his face. Soon, Snortbow vanished from sight, as purple things are known to do. Soon, a scream erupted from behind the horned thing. Yeah! Snotbow burst out from hiding and waved his stabber this way and that, spooking the creature something terrible. It scrambled away and began bolting towards the ambush spot. As it approached, the five snotlings leapt out from behind the tree and began waving their pokey sticks at it. The creature reared up, Expender Snot stabbed forward with all of his might, and overextended only to fall flat on his face. Redshirt 2, Fodderus, and Punch and Bag didn't do too much better, as they were all too scared of its stomping, tramping hooves to get close enough. Only Steve managed to bravely step forward and chop at its front leg, cutting a gash across it. It was in this moment that tree climber leapt from his own hiding place. Up in the tree, naturally, he landed full force on the horned thing and rammed his spear deep into its back. The creature brayed in pain. Tree climber himself smacked against the creature's back and tumbled off to the side, a little battered from the fall but not seriously injured. Then... It was time for Snortius himself to charge forward with his poisoned spear. And just before he reached the creature, he slid low along the ground to get underneath it. He struck perfectly. The blade of the spear slipped right beneath the ribcage of the creature and drove straight into its heart. The creature cried out and began bucking and kicking and tossing its head. The snotlings in front of it scattered, trying to get out of the way as it struck out wildly in its death throes. Snottius dodged the kicks to the rear, but as the creature tossed its horn at the group of snots, Expenda Snot was impaled and torn apart, his upper and lower halves flung into the air. Fodorus was next. He held up his spear to defend himself, but was pierced right through the skull as his head was torn from his body. Snortius yanked his spear free, and blood flowed from the wound. A lot of blood. The creature struggling and flailing quickly became weak as it lowered itself to the ground, braying and moving its limbs and head this way and that. Weaker and weaker. Soon, it was dead. A large pool of blood beneath it. Snotbow removed some of the purple from his face and appeared next to Snotius. You did it, boss! Snotius stood triumphant over the creature. He was still undefeated. He had slain every foe that he faced. He hoped that his luck would hold out when the Git gods came. When those long-limbed, weedy creatures came. Snotius put such thoughts aside for the moment. He gave hearty congratulations to Snotbow, Tree Climber, and Steve for their bravery and fighting prowess. To the others, who were settling down from their panic and picking up the long choppers they had dropped, Snortius gave them a sharp cuff to the ears and sent them off to carry the carcass. For Fodorus and Expendusnot, however, their names shall be remembered amongst the fallen as Snortopia's finest. Snortius stuck his finger up his nose once more in salute to those somewhat brave Snotlings. But now, 
it was time to return to the jewel of his empire, the unconquerable Snartantinople. No man do they call me. My mother and my father, and all my comrades as well. Thank you all for listening to this week's episode of Growing the Tribe. This is a story based off of a role-playing game that I play with chat when I stream occasionally. Uh, if you're interested in joining in on the fun, I will announce when streams are happening in the community tab. I usually stream at 5 p.m. GMT each week uh, on Friday, though every week is not a Growing the Tribe week. Uh, I ask that you please give a like and comment, as that will help ensure that you will grow big and strong and become more of a Steve and less of an expend snot If you have not yet subscribed, please do so in order to hear more stories about the epic tales from Snot Antinople. If you would like to support me, you can do so via PayPal or Patreon. Both of those will be linked in below. Uh, and if you have absolutely no idea what's going on, you can click on the playlist to hear the story from the beginning, and that should be appearing on screen right now. Thank you all very much. No man out.